Well, happy summer, everybody. It is hot. In the deep south, we love the summertime. Beaches, pool parties, barbecues, stuff like that. But it gets really, really hot. And what has happened? My air condition has quit working in my car. Hmm. That's when it's going to quit. Now we're going to fix it. Now, if you saw the previous video that I had my car in, I cleaned the car out. You should check it out if you didn't see it, especially if you have a car that smells really bad due to smoker, uh, something like that. But if you own a 2011, somewhere around there, model year of Ford Fusion, I believe they started making this model of Fusion maybe around 2008. So we'll say from around 2008 to 2012, if you own one of those cars, you will know that it has a few air conditioning problems on a regular basis. Once you figure out what's wrong with the car, it's not that big of a deal to keep up, but if you don't know, if, you don't, if you're not very mechanical, or if you just don't wanna work on something or whatever, it could be a huge hassle and it could be a huge repair bill. But I'm gonna go over a few things that can help you save some money, get your air condition going, and you don't have to pull the dash out. Now, one of the problems with the Ford Fusion is the blend door actuator. Some people believe that uh, when they turn the air condition on and all of a sudden it gets really, really hot, I'm not talking about the vent air is just blowing, I'm talking about you can tell it's full blast heat coming out. If you have that problem, a lot of people think that it's the blend door actuator, which is the door that actuates from the evaporator to the heater coil for air condition to heat. A lot of people think it's the blend door actuator that's the problem, and yours could be that problem, but most of the time that's not what it is. If it switches from vent or AC cool over to hot, then it's working. If it goes all the way over to hot, then there's something telling it to go over to hot, over to heat, and it's giving you super hot air. Now, if it's the middle of the summertime and your vents feel like a hot jet engine, then that's probably what the problem is. Now, not your AC is what I'm saying as far as the AC compressor. So with that, I changed the control head, which is where all your buttons are, uh, where you can select air condition, your feet, uh, defrost, things like that. Well, I changed that, kind of still had the problem. There's a weird fix that I haven't 100% proven that it works in my car, but there's a lot of people that say that it works in that if you cannot figure out why your car keeps going to heat, even when you press cold and AC, they say to turn on your headlights, and if you have fog lights, make sure to pull the headlight switch out so the fog lights will come on, some weird anomaly in the computer, and it'll cycle over to cold, and then you will have air conditioning. Like I said, I've never proven it to 100% work in my car, but I will tell you this. My car does have the blend door problem. So I've tried that a few times, and every single time that I've turned the headlights on and the fog lights, the blend door stays on cold like it's supposed to. Crazy. I've never gotten it to absolutely change over. In other words, I've never had it on heat and turn on the lights and actually witnessed it changing over to cool. But every time I have the headlights on, it never goes to heat. I can say that. Now, my problem now is not the blend door. It's that the air conditioning compressor is not turning on. So everything else checks out good. I checked the Freon, it's got good Freon charge. I knew it was good anyway because it suddenly just quit working one day. It was super cold and one day it just quit working. So, another issue with these cars, and a lot of cars, not just these, is the evaporator discharge temp sensor goes bad. Not bad, $20 part, just change it out. The problem is you have to pull the dashboard completely forward. 
not necessarily take the whole dashboard out, but at least take about a hundred bolts out and then move it forward so you can get down in there five minutes to change a $20 part. I'm not gonna do that. Now I'll wait until something real bad happens where you have to pull the dash out, like the heater coil goes bad, starts leaking, then I'll change the sensor and the heater coil at the same time. But I'm not gonna pull the dash just for a sensor. So what we're gonna work on today is a workaround. And I'm not gonna strip any wires, I'm not gonna make my car to where I can't fix it right. It's a temporary fix, but it's gonna be a temporary fix to where uh, we don't actually cut any wires or anything like that so we can return it back to stock configuration. Let me show you how we're gonna do this. Okay, so now let's see what's going on. The car is running, no air conditioning unit is on. Turn on the power to the air condition. Fan turns on, air is blowing. Feel the air coming out here. Have it all the way on cold. Hit the AC button, turn the AC on, and nothing happens. I can tell the compressor has not turned on uh, in the engine compartment. You can wait for a little while, and no cold air is blowing out, but it's just ventilation air. Not the super jet engine hot air that I was talking about earlier, but just regular warm outside air. One of the things you can check on this car, like I said, one of the issues that it has is the command for the blend door actuator. So we can turn this one all the way to heat. I can hear it moving. You can listen real close. You can hear the blend door actuator move. Now I'm starting to feel that really hot air coming out of the vents. So at this time, I don't have a blend door actuator problem or control issue with that getting super hot, about to make me start sweating already. Turn it back to cold. Listen for the blend door actuator. I can hear it moving. You can hear everything change. And now it goes back to the warm ventilation air. So like I said, I already checked the Freon. I know everything else is good. We know that the evaporator discharge air temp sensor is bad so now let's find the workaround all right so now we're gonna go in behind the glove box we're gonna find the wires for the evaporator uh, discharge air temp sensor and we're gonna mess around with the wires a little bit now where my car differs from a lot of other cars is mine is an SE 2011 Ford Fusion SE uh, most of the other cars that I see on uh, YouTube and YouTube uh, DIY videos to fix this problem, they have a 24 pin system. Talking about the plug that's behind the glove box. Let me go ahead and show it to you. Okay, so now we've gone behind the glove box. So all I've done is open it up, rotated it all the way down. As you can see, my car has the blue plug on the left, gray plug on the right. Most other models will have a green plug on the left. No matter if it's green or blue, you're gonna to wanna to unplug the plug on the left because that is where the wires are gonna be for the sensor that we wanna to get to. Once you unplug it, a lot of the other models that I found online for a Ford Fusion is a 24 pin plug. My car is an SE, which is a one of the base models of the Fusion, which is a good thing, less things to break, stuff like that. But with everybody else having a 24 pin version, that's mostly what you find on YouTube. So, mine is a 16 pin. So if you happen to have this version, this video is gonna help you a lot. There's not a lot of information on here for a 16 pin system. Flip it over, and you can count 16 positions. Now, I don't have wires in every one, but there's 16 positions there. Most YouTube videos that you find on this issue, when it's plugged in, 
just like that. They say go from the top, starting at the left, and you look at pins three and four. Those are the temp sensor wires that we're looking for, but on my car, there's not a wire in pin number three. So obviously that's not for my car. If your car looks like this, this video is for you. So I had to keep searching, keep searching, keep searching. So I finally found a wiring diagram that fits my car. I'm gonna post that link or that picture onto the video so you can see it. Feel free to pause the video at any time to look at that. Now, so what I'm gonna do to make it easier on everybody, including myself, because I've messed this up a few times, is I'm going to turn what's called on the diagram, the female harness, the same way that it is turned on the picture. What we're gonna do for the SE model, and probably most 16 pin models, the sensor that we're looking for is gonna be wire location 15 and 13. And what do you know, I have wires in those locations. So, where are those wires? If you're looking at it from the way the diagram shows, and the way I have it held here, you're gonna go all the way to the top left. That is pin number 16. Back up one, pin number 15. Keep going down, 14, and I have nothing in that slot. Then pin number 13. So if you come from this top left-hand corner, as number 16, work your way down, we're going to do the second and fourth locations. Easy enough, right? That just shows you the wires that we're going to be messing with. Oh man, I'm starting to sweat. Now, <clears throat> let's talk a little bit about theory. How are we going to do this? Okay, so you showed me where the wires were at. I see that. Stanley way all the way, right? But now what do we do with the wires? Well, you have a couple choices that you can make on what you want to do. Now, to give you an idea of the switch, okay, all it is is a temperature probe, basically a thermistor. What a thermistor does is it takes temperature. So right now it's taking the temperature of the air coming out of the evaporator. And it takes that temperature, and according to the temperature that that thermistor reads, it's going to change the resistance. In other words, the uh, electrical resistance of that probe. And it's going to send a resistance, a predetermined amount, back to the computer. Now, the problem with mine is, is I believe that the sensor is broken or open, which means uh, the voltage from the computer goes to the sensor, but then when it goes through, nothing comes back. So, since nothing comes back from the, the sensor to the computer, it thinks that it's infinite, or it's basically reading infinite resistance, which is way too high. So you have an infinite amount of resistance that's showing a super, super, super cold temperature. So then what it's doing is the computer saying, okay, well the evaporator coil is too cold. I don't want it to freeze up, cause damage or anything like that. I'm gonna turn the compressor off and it's going to let the uh, evaporator uh, defrost. Kind of like if you have a heat pump system on your house, and in the winter time, you've got the heat on, you see it start to frost up on the outside, and then you hear it go, Pshew! all kind of crazy noises. What it's doing is the compressor turns off. I'm not gonna go in all the details, but basically uh, your coil outside of your house will then start to defrost. Same thing that your car does. But your car, all it's doing is turning the air compressor off. The air conditioner compressor, we'll say that, okay? Now, with it thinking that mine is super cold, it's never going to let the compressor turn on, even though it's hot in here. Hot as you know where. I don't want to say where because that's considered cussing in the south, if you know what I mean. But what we're going to do is we're going to fool the computer. Yes, human beings at this point, to an extent, are smarter than computers. So this computer is programmed to read a certain resistance in order from the temp probe in order to turn the compressor on. 
so we don't have to change the temp probe, open the uh, the dashboard, I'll do all that kind of work. All we have to do is tell the computer the proper resistance. The computer is happy. It turns on the air conditioning compressor. I have cold air and then we're all happy. So I had to find out what that resistance would be. Doing a little research on the internet, I found that 32,000 to 33,000 ohms is a good uh, middle of the road set of, or middle of the road resistance that the computer needs to turn the air compressor on. So that's what I did. Or that's what we're gonna do. Well, on Amazon, can't buy just one resistor, you know, uh, but they're cheap. Whole package of resistors. All types of different resistance that it has for like 12 bucks, 15 bucks or something like that. So if you know me personally, you live in this area. If you need one of these, just let me know. I got a ton of them. We can work out a deal. You know, one of those free deals, kind of cool. Anyway, what we're going to do is I'm going to wire in one of these super cheap resistors. Now, what does that do? The resistor is going to take the electric load, the voltage from the computer in one wire. It's going to go through and it's going to resist some of that electrical charge from going back to the computer. The cool thing is, we can choose any resistance we want because we have tons of different resistors in here. So I picked out, I believe it's a 33,000 or 33K ohm resistor. We put that in there. As soon as we put that resistor in there, the air, comp I mean, the air conditioner compressor should click on because it believes, okay, it's at ambient temp, which I don't remember what 33,000 ohms is, somewhere around 75 degrees, 70, 75 degrees. It's gonna say, okay, the evaporator is not freezing up. I'm gonna turn the compressor on. I'm gonna give this guy some air conditioning. That's the theory. Was it too much? Did I explain it correctly? Am I even in focus right now with the camera? I don't know. We're gonna try it. We're gonna see if it works. So what I'm gonna do before I take any wires apart, I'm gonna take that resistor and with it, with it unplugged, hopefully most of the air conditioning system is gonna work okay with the uh, plug disconnected, turn the car on, plug the resistor in there, and we're gonna see if we can get the air compressor, <gasps> air conditioning compressor to turn on. Hmm. Are you confident? Okay, you ready to do this? I'm ready. I'm nervous. Every time I do something like this to my car, you know, I hope I don't burn up a computer or something. You never know what could happen. Anyway, what I did off camera is I highlighted the 15 and 13 pin location so that I could get to it easily. So all we're going to do, the car is running, temperature is going up to about 300 million degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to turn the air conditioner on. Air condition comes on. Air conditioner light is on, which means the air conditioning system is telling the computer that it wants the air compressor to come on, but it's not coming on. So if you've never seen a resistor before, there is a resistor. Not in focus, of course, but it's a little bitty guy. Well, I tried a couple times to show you a resistor, but it's so tiny the camera didn't want to focus on it. But maybe after I get it put in the wire, you'll see it. Okay, so I'm burning up. So the air conditioner is on. We're going to listen for the compressor to click on when I put these wires in, or put the resistor in the wire location. So let's see what happens. Hopefully no electrical shock, anything like that. Can hear it and it works we'll let it sit there for a little while and make sure that it's good 
that simple. Obviously, this is not a 100% fix. Um, it's something to do if you don't have the money to pay a shop to uh, take the dashboard out. There's something you can do until you have the money for that. If you fix a lot of cars yourself like me, you just don't want to take the dashboard all the way out, you can do this too. But all I want to do is just to stick the resistor in there to see if it works, and it does. Man, ice cold air coming out of the vents. That's what I was hoping for. So now, we'll take the plug apart, pull the wires out, and show you what our semi-permanent fix is going to be. I'm going to pull this white section out, try to get these wires loose, only take the two wires out that we need, put that back together so the plug works good, plug it back in, and then um, permanently attach or semi-permanently attach this resistor to those two wires. So let's try it. All right, so off camera, I had to do a little messing around with this plug to actually figure out how to get this wire out. So, as you can see, I went ahead and took the white connector all the way out. It just pulls out, nothing special. I got a 90 degree angled pick. Pick this portion of it till the white portion came out or slid back and then I just went ahead and pulled it all the way out. Well, then the issue I was having was getting the wire actually out of the back of the plug. That's why I paused the video, went ahead and tried to figure out. So what I'm gonna show you is, you won't be able to see it on camera, but you can shine a flashlight down in there and you can see that there's an individual retainer for every single wire all the way down in there. So what you need to get is some sort of pick, real small screwdriver. It's gonna be able to go up inside of there uh, the same side that the wire is coming from. So from this angle, it'll be from the back side. It's gonna go over there on top of the wire. It's gonna push the retainer up. You can't see it, so you just have to mess around with it until you believe that you've got the retainer up and then you pull the wire out. Once you, once you get it uh, to the point where the wire is gonna come out, it comes out really easy. So I started yanking on it in the beginning. Don't do that part. Don't yank on the wire, you might mess it up because we want to be able to put it back together at some point and everything work correctly. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the connector, I'm going to push it up against the back of the glove box, push the straight pick, try to move the retainer out of the way and pull the wire out. I already got number 15 out, I'm going to pull out number 13. So now we're going to put the white retainer back into the plug, plug it back into the dash so we don't have any issues there. With that plugged in, all that's out of the way. All we have left are our two wires for our temp sensor. What I'm gonna do with this resistor is I'm just going to weave them, weave one leg around one wire connector, the other leg around the other wire connector, tape it with electrical tape, call it good. So now as you can see, everything is connected, covered, I'm not gonna touch any metal, I'm not gonna cause any other issues. And effectively, all we've done is we have replaced the sensor with a resistor. It's not gonna, it's not gonna tell you, obviously, the computer, the actual temp of what's going on. We are fooling the computer that it thinks it has a good temp sensor hooked up to it. Ambient temp, 70, 75 degrees and with the resistance that resistor is going to put back out to the computer the pressure is going to run all the time now let's just see if it works 
All right, car is running. Let's turn on the air, see what happens. Vent air is coming out. Let's hit the compressor. I heard it click on. Wait a little bit of time, see if we have cold air coming, and I can already feel it. Cold air is coming out. Now, I didn't do a permanent connection, obviously, because we want to, at, at some point in time in the future, we're going to replace the temp sensor like it's supposed to be replaced. So, my connections, as far as the resistor to the wires, may come loose at some time, but all I'm going to have to do is just go in there, take electrical tape off, attach it better. I didn't want to solder anything. I didn't want to cut any wires, nothing like that. Connectors come out of the back of the plug. A little bit aggravating, not too bad. So now we just put the glove box back in place and we're good. Well, aside from sweating to death until I got this done, it's just that easy. It's that simple. No need to pay a repair bill. I've heard some people say $600 to $900 to have somebody do it. You know, if you want to pay that money because you don't want to deal with it and you want your air conditioner to run perfectly fine, then, then pay that. But I'm not going to do that. Anybody that knows me knows I will not do that. Nothing wrong if you want to. But just that quick, it didn't take very long. It took longer for me to wrestle with the camera and different cam camera angles and focus and all that junk than it did to actually uh, temporarily fix the problem. But we have air conditioning. The only issue that this may cause is now if I leave the air conditioner on for a long time, it could cause the evaporator to freeze up inside the dash. Now, one way that you know that's happening is let's say you're running the air, you've got the fan turned on, well then slowly uh, the output of the air, the fan doesn't feel as strong coming out. So then you turn the fan up and say, man, I need more air than that. You turn it up, you hear the fan running uh, louder, like it's supposed to be pushing more air, but less and less air comes out. If you have that, then you know that your evaporator is freezing up. All it is, is the condensation, the humidity from the air is being uh, taken out of the cab or the outside air uh, out in the south with all the humidity. It's hitting that evaporator and the evaporator is so cold that it freezes. Well, it freezes up. Obviously, when you start getting the ice layer on that evaporator, it's gonna have less airflow going through. So if you start feeling less airflow, you know it's freezing up, then you become the computer. Okay, well, I'm gonna hit the AC button and let the compressor turn off. Let it defrost for a little while. You don't have to turn the whole air off. Leave the fan blowing so it'll blow warm air back through it. Turn the AC button off. It turns off the compressor. Let it defrost for a few minutes. Doesn't take very long. You'll feel the airflow coming back. Then you hit the AC button, cools right back down, good to go. So all we've done is eliminated the computer from telling the compressor to turn off because of a possible evaporator coil issue. That's it. So you have any questions about it, comments, whatever, let me know. Uh, obviously in the comments block. If you like this video, well then like it. Just hit the little thumbs up thing. Subscribe. You know what all the YouTubers say. Like, subscribe, this and that, whatever. Nah. Anyway, I guess it's time to go back and work on the movie theater a little bit more. Hmm. See ya.